Okay, so we're going to do this integration. One thing I'm going to say is uh, this is a very old book, but um, I don't know. I don't know on Google. I haven't actually checked this on Google, but maybe there's a version, a newer version of this now. But um, or any or any. Uh, the only reason I show you this one because it's a particularly good one. Yeah, uh, it's a bit old and battered now. But basically, um, this is great because it's got all of the things you need for electronics and electrical engineering yeah, in terms of the maths and all the formulas and everything it's really great the, one of the cool things it's got is the integrals and the identities the trig identities and everything so I'm gonna as I go through this I'm gonna try and refer back to this book and uh, just show you that there are books like this you know maybe you won't have this particular books but they're gonna be books like this that are really helpful and you should have one basically <laughs> Because you can just look up the integrals and that, and I'll show you how I'll do that as we go through. Because there's a lot of steps in here, which uh, might not be obvious to you if your maths is, you know, not that strong, and, and it doesn't need to be that strong. But this book is going to help you if you, if your maths is not that strong, yeah, or a book like it at least. So anyway, let's go through this. Um, so to finish this tutorial, let's do the integration. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So basically, we've got the integration. Remember what we did is we ended up with a force along the x direction, and we wanted to solve this integral really. So you bring all the all the constants outside. So you ain't got to worry about all of this. We can just bring that outside. Yeah. So this is the integral we're trying to solve. Now that now you can you can look this up, and a lot of these are already this particular one is not actually given in a lookup table of integrals so we we need to be able to get it in a form where there is uh, an integral of this and one of the first things you would do if you're familiar with mathematics you would look at that straight away and you'd know that x squared at y squared is part of a right angle triangle and that's gonna give you a big clue so whenever you see that in an integral first thing you want to do is draw yourself a triangle so that's what I've done here so whenever you see x squared plus y squared or z, z squared plus p squared or anything like that, something squared plus something else squared, go and draw yourself a triangle immediately because you can almost guarantee that there's going to be some trig in there and when you, you'll, all, you'll find some identity, trig identity of some sort that will help you solve this, this uh, integral. Yeah? So that's, what, that's the first thing I do is I draw a triangle and then I just draw all the, the bits in the triangle. So you've got the angle and then you've got the x and the y. Okay? Now you can see from that triangle immediately, you can see that sine y, sine theta equals y over the square root of x squared plus y squared and also cosine as in as in the, the main problem again I've just written these down again now there's some important trig identities now here's a trig identity tan to the tan to the uh, theta squared plus one equals sec two theta and here's another one one over sec theta equals cosine theta so uh, if you don't believe that they're trig identities you can get your book and you can look up the trig identities in your book so uh, that's what I do I mean Whenever I see something with with triangles and that, I go straight here because you know you can guarantee that um, it's going to be something to do with trig identities. Um, you know, even when you've got a problem and you you've got a real problem, real life problem, and you you can get some insight into the trig by going to your identities. Yeah, instead of having to prove all the identities, it'll take you forever to prove them all. So we're not going to you know waste time proving all these identities. We're just going to use the fact that they are you know well regarded and true yeah so for example here we've got uh, um, let me just see what we've got here now so here this one 1 add tan uh, theta squared equals sec to the theta squared yeah so that's that one there so that's that trig identity there and then you've got another one um, which is a pretty standard one okay you got sec theta so this really is round the other way in this book so sec theta equals 1 over cosine theta so that's just been transposed yeah so it's just the same as 1 over cosine theta equals sec theta yeah so that's that you've got that one and uh, then all the rest of them are in here yeah so it's a pretty cool book so that there you go there's the identities from that book I'm going to use the book again in a minute so uh, so now we've uh, I mean the reason I've written these down is going to be useful as we go on yeah so uh, it's not I'm not going to use these yet, but it's going to be useful as we go on, right? So the first thing we're going to do is, first thing uh, we do is we're going to use, once we've got our, um, our triangle here, 
now we're going to use a substitution because that integral here, yeah, I mean you're not going to, you look at this integral, unless you know the proof of how to solve this, you're not going to be able to solve it basically, I mean some mathematician solved this years ago and probably done it by luck, you know, <laughs> so all you can do now is follow what I'm going to step through and if you follow the steps, that's good enough, yeah, you're never going to, you know, if you were given that integral and and you know and you solved it you'd be like up there with the top mathematicians yeah so all you got to do is follow what they have figured out yeah so let's just follow that through so we've got like uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this substitution yeah so we're going to say we're going to let y equals x uh, times tan theta now you can do that because of this triangle tan theta equals y over x yeah so it's legitimate to, to set y equals this and when you make that substitution obviously you've got to uh, no longer be using I don't know if you remember the integration by substitution you've then got to convert your dy into the new variable so you've got to have a d theta over here so we'll do that in a minute yeah uh, so now we can write x squared at y squared equals now here's where we're going to use a trig identity for this bit underneath as I said there's a big clue here that you know that's got something to do with trigonometry. It's got something to do with the right-hand triangle. So immediately you're going to say to yourself, "Okay, I've got to, I've got to make a substitution here somehow." And what you can do is you can look at the y squared here. Okay, now I've said y. We're using the substitution y equals x tan theta. Now, if you use the the substitution x equals tan theta. Let's put that in for y, and let's see what happens. And this is quite interesting. If you do that, you get x squared plus x squared tan theta squared. Okay, so we've just squared these two terms. Now that's that immediately is going to say to you, ah, right, I recognise that's another trig identity. And if we go over here, here's our trig identity. So it's tan theta squared plus one equals sec two theta. Now. So what we're going to do is going to replace this with sec 2 theta, okay? So let's just do that. So now using the trig identity A, which is this one, we can rewrite we can rewrite this. Now remember, I've just put the x to the... Th I'm going to use this here. So we put that down here again. So we've got x squared plus x squared to tan theta squared equals x squared brackets 1 add tan theta squared. And then uh, uh, once we've used that substitution over over here then we can just slot that in here. So now we've reduced this to x squared sec to the 2 theta, okay? So instead of writing this down now, we've just got this one term. Instead of this, we've just got this one term. Hence we now have um, x squared plus y squared to the 3, 2. So this term now, we can take this term underneath now, and it's identical to this x squared sec 2 theta to the 3 tooths, okay? That's identical to that. So we've just we've just used all the substitutions here, we've done it all, and we've we've replaced all of that here with this term here. So now that's now obviously when you uh, expand out the, the three tooths here, you know, multiply them out, you'll say that three tooths times three tooths to the tooths power, you know, the, the twos are gonna cancel and you get x3 there, and same here. Sec to the theta 2 uh, and you add the powers don't you so you're going to see uh, the 2's cancel and you're going to get sec 3 here yeah so you've got x cubed and sec theta cubed okay so now we've got that so by multiplying this out we end up with this over here so now we're going to use our substitution and remember when you're using substitution you want to get things in terms of theta so we're going to we're gonna we've got to find the the theta part, yeah. So we're gonna write down the dy. So we're gonna uh, differentiate this now with respect differentiate it with respect to theta. So we're gonna take dy by d theta, and then when we rearrange it, uh, tan theta. When you take the the uh, derivative of tan theta, if you look it up in your derivative tables, you'll find it's sec theta. Okay. So again, you can use your book if you want to find out what the derivative of tan theta is, you can use your lookup book and you'll find it's uh, sec theta. Some of you might just know it because you've done it so many times, but those of you a bit rusty, just use your lookup book, yeah? So, um, okay, so we've got dy equals x, and when we take the differential, obviously we're differentiating this with, the return, with respect to theta, so the x just comes outside, so we take the differential of tan theta and we get sec theta squared d theta. 
that's what we're after we're after the defeater okay because we've just multiplied that through now and we've got the defeater so instead of the dy now we can use our substitution which is where what we wanted to do so this whole thing now in terms of y i've written it here now becomes uh, x squared sec 2 theta uh, over uh, x3 sec to 3 theta okay d theta because we put in We've put in the d theta, that's where that's coming from at the top, okay? Remember, we've taken the x outside, uh, so the x is outside there. And that is identical to, because you're going to see now, this is the neat bit, that all of this can't... See, you're never going to be able to do this uh, integral if you, didn't, if you didn't see the steps. I mean, it's like mad, you know? But uh, basically, you can now divide these, these two out, yeah? Because you can see that the x squared... You're going to get one x underneath, and the sec two, the sec theta squared over the sec theta cubed, you, they're going to cancel. And you're just going to get the sec theta underneath. So you end up with this really nice uh, integral to solve. You end up with one over x sec theta. Okay, right now, final step. We take the x outside because obviously we're only integrating with respect to theta. So we take the one over x outside. Now you'll also remember that one over sec theta. If we look up in our book, it's equal to cosine theta, yes? Yeah? So we can replace the 1 over sec theta with cosine theta. So finally, we've got a really simple integration to make between a and minus a, which is our original problem. I mean, if you was, like, trying to do this in the, in the original problem, you'd have forgotten what the original problem was by the time you get to here. So, yeah, uh, basically, this is just uh, sort of a, a, a bit of the tutorial purely about how, in, how to solve a complex integral, yeah? which you're not going to be able to solve, I mean, you know, uh, unless you see these steps. So now we end up with this really simple integration, 1 over x, cosine theta between a and minus a d theta. So we can solve that easily. We know straight away, you know, that when you take the integral of cosine, you get sine. So now we've, we don't need our integral sine anymore. We just write 1 over x, bracket, sine theta, close brackets between a and minus a. Now you say, well, I can, hold on a minute. How do I, how am I going to... Uh, you know, uh, fill that in because I need a I need a y in here, yeah. Because obviously the a the a is the y part, yeah. So I'm going to see. I need to I need a y in here before I can evaluate this. So the the obvious thing is to realise here that sine theta is in fact y over the square root of x squared or y squared. So we're going to now put that back there. <laughs> so, so now we put that back. So we've got sine theta a to the minus a. We're going to put that back in there now. So now we put that back in. We're going to have... Uh, oh, sorry, that's just... We don't need to look at that anymore. We're going to put that back in and we get this. So now we get this. Okay, so that's cool. Now we've got a Y in there, yes? Yeah? So we've got between A and minus A. Now it's really easy. We just uh, uh, we just say that. Remember, it's uh, putting in the A and then minus whatever that is. So it's minus times a minus is a plus. So you've got these two terms. Basically, it's two. The two terms are the same. So you bring the two out. So you've got two of those terms there. And then obviously the two two a here is going to cancel with these two a. So there's going to cancel. Finally, you're left with uh, q times big Q over four pi epsilon naught times one over x square root of x squared plus a. So finally, as we stated earlier, that's how that integral is solved. So you can see why why uh most textbooks won't ever you know most physics textbooks or uh books on uh electromagnetism won't probably ever go through this integral because it's i mean basically if you just if you just follow all the steps you can see how i've done these steps and you can see the logic but to actually uh for some mathematician sometime or other in the past has actually figured this out it's just mind-boggling because i mean all of those substitutions and uh you know i mean you've got to be really quite advanced mathematician to be able to, to to just conjure that up out of your head i think probably a lot of it was luck you know or maybe a com uh, a, uh, uh, a collaboration between you know several people or something because th that, that's pretty amazing so i hope you enjoyed that <laughs> or didn't find it too painful but i just wanted to go through it because uh, a lot of these integrals can be quite uh, difficult and often they, the, the textbooks just won't go through them because it's just just take too long you know so that's this uh, lecture over uh, the next one and it should be a little bit shorter than this one it's going to go over uh, some uh, some of the basic uh, uh, vector 
maths you'll need, as in the cross product and the, and the dot product. So see you on the next one.